Okay, today is a holiday, but Thursday got tutorials, Friday didn't, so here is the online video for Friday for week four. The first question asks you to transcribe the following words into IPA and then draw a syllable structure for each of these. So pause the video, try it yourself, and then we'll go through it. Okay, fantastic. Concert. So our first job is to transcribe it into IPA. I'm going to do it at the bottom because I'm going to build my trees going upwards. So we have k, a, n, s, the schwa, er, t. Now to build our syllables, we simply follow a pattern. Every vowel is going to be a nucleus, which builds up into a rhyme, which builds up into a syllable. So we can do this for the a and the e. This should match the number of claps you would get if you were to clap out the syllable. Concert. Two. So we have two. That's good. Our next job is to fill up the onsets as big as we can. So the first syllable, a, first vowel, we look to the left. And k, that can start the beginning of a word. So we can put it into an onset. We go to the next vowel, the schwa. We look to the left and we say, can we start a word with ns? And the answer is no. We cannot. So can we start a word with just the S? Yes, we can. Therefore, the S takes up the onset. Now, when we have no onsets left to fill, we just dump all the consonants into the codas of the syllable to the left. So N is going to be a coda to con, and ert is going to be a coda to s. So con, cert. And then, don't forget, we want to link these up together to the prosodic word. So this is the syllable structure for concert. What about taxes? So we'll transcribe this to x is. Okay, so remember that x is actually two sounds, k and s. So same thing as before. Vowels get nucleus rhyme to syllable. So we have two taxes. We're going to fill up our onsets as big as possible, so the T is fine. What about KS? Can we do KS at the beginning of a word? No. We can do S though, so S will go there. And then we're going to dump the remaining consonants into codas. So taxes. And this joins up to be a word. Next one, enjoy. So N, J, OI. Okay, so four sounds here. We give nucleus rhyme syllable to all of our vowels. Yes, diphthongs get them too. Now we do some onsets. There's nothing to the left of the e, so we don't have an onset for the first syllable. The second one, can nj be a word at the beginning? No. What about j? Yes. So that'll be an onset. And then we're going to dump the coda. Well, we'll dump the n into the coda of the previous syllable, and we'll draw them together as a word. Enjoy. Next one, troubling, troubling. You might say troubling, so three syllables, or you could say troubling, two syllables. I will do the two syllable version, so tr-bling. Either one is fine, it just depends how you pronounce it. So if you did troubling, there'd be a schwa there and the syllables would be a little bit different. So, vowels, nucleus, rhyme, syllable, Nucleus, rhyme, syllable. Let's just connect them to the word layer first for funsies. Okay, now, onsets. Can we have tr at the beginning of a word, tr? And the answer is yes, so we can put both of these in the onset. What about for the next syllable, bl? Like in bling, can we have bl at the beginning of a word? The answer is yes. So, both go in the onset. Tr, bl, and then we'll dump that ng into the coda of the final syllable. So this one doesn't have a coda for the first syllable. It's tr bling. If you were to do tr bling, then what you would have, so we can just throw this in there, tr bling, what we would end up with is another syllable, rhyme, nucleus, and then we'd end up with another onset there to get troubling. So two trees for that. Last one is circumference. You can say circumference, but that's not very standard in speech. So circumference with three syllables is a little bit more common. So 
sir, should make that a little bit neater. Come, sir, come, Circumference, circumference. Circumference. Uh, some people might put a T in there, circumference. So why not? Let's just put it there. Circumference. It's a few different ways to transcribe this one, depending on your pronunciation. So this is the three-syllable version. Uh, so as always, nucleus, rhyme, syllable, nucleus, rhyme, syllable, nucleus, rhyme, syllable. Okay, uh, now we have to start filling in onsets. So S can be an onset. What about R, K? Not really, just the K can, so K will be an onset. What about mfr? Mfr. We can't do mfr, but we can do fr. So we can make the F and the R, the beginning of the third syllable there, and then we'll dump the rest into coda positions. So just dump them into the coda of the previous syllable. Well, notice this coda is pretty big, but we can have an NTS coda in English, that's fine. A three sound coda isn't bad if it ends with S and the other uh, sounds follow the phonotactics of English. Now, before I forget, we bring these all together to form a prosodic word. So that's the first problem. The second problem is an exploration problem. We talked about phonotactics in Spanish, and we deduced that there were some combinations that could not appear at the beginning of words, like SKW, SPW, SPL, things like that. So here's some data from Spanish, and these are some English words. This is how a Spanish speaker learns to pronounce them, and on the right is how an English speaker would say them. Now, there's something phonological happening here, and I think we can see exactly what it is. If you take a look at the two, the only difference is that Spanish speakers add an E at the beginning. So they say, esqui, es special, estart, es cool, es fin. Now, why does this happen? There's some reason with phonotactics and syllable structures that explains why this works. So think about it for a minute, pause the video, and now I'll tell you what happens. So what's happening here is that in Spanish, they do not allow an SC cluster in the onset. So you can't have an S and another consonant in the onset of a syllable. So when you get a word like ski, let's just draw this syllable in English. So let me put it further down the page here, ski. What's going to happen if we draw this syllable structure out? In English, we get S and K in the onset but Spanish speakers cannot have S and K in the onset in Spanish. So they're gonna bring that over with them when they start learning English. So what's going to happen is the S is going to be stranded on its own. It's not going to be able uh, to get a syllable. So what they do is they introduce E. Let me do that in a different color. They put E in there. So that way they can introduce a new syllable and the S can fit into the coda. So they can end up saving the sound, they don't drop it, they keep it, by adding the A in the beginning to get a new syllable, so that way it doesn't violate their phonotactics. Because that's a rule in Spanish, we don't have it in English, but when you learn a new language, you're going to bring your rules over when you start. So, that explains why this is happening. A is being inserted to adhere to Spanish photo phonotactics. The third problem is about finding separate phonemes. So this is from Inuktitut. So we have six words here, and I'm asking you if E and U are separate phonemes or if they're allophones. So how do you figure that out? That's your job. And are they? That's your second job. Your third job is to see if there's any other minimal pairs that you can find. So pause the video, try it yourself. And now here's the solutions. So we're finding minimal pairs. That's the job. So we need to find two words that differ in one sound, and we're looking at E and U. So actually, if we take a look at the first two words, it only differs in these two sounds, iglumut and iglumit. Therefore, we have the minimal pair. They mean different things to a house from a house. So E and U are separate phonemes. 
Now, what else can we find here? Well, if we take a look on the right with ukiuch, uh, sorry, ukiuch, uki, ukiuch, and ukiach, uh, they differ just in one sound. So here we have u and we have a being separate. Now, if we take a look at one more pair of words for house, igloo, and seal's breathing hole, aglu, we see it differs just in e and a. So here we get that e and a are separate phonemes. So from this whole data set, we can conclude that e, u, and a are all separate phonemes. Okay, next data set. Are L and so are L and L separate phonemes? So this L with the little squiggle in it is a velarized L. So it's it's the regular L, but there's some velarization in there. Tongue is up against the velum. So let's see if there's a pattern here. And this one's actually a little bit tougher than the other ones, and I'll show you why. So first of all, we can look for minimal pairs. Uh, do we see a minimal pair? No? Okay, great. Next step, let's make a little chart. And we'll see how far we can get with this chart. So the first one, uh, light, that's at the beginning of a word, it's before I. Leaf, beginning of the word before E. Release, between a schwa and an E. Bali, it's between an A uh, and an E. Uh, krill has this one at the end of a word before an E. Falter has it between an A and a T. Mall has it at the end of a word. Mildew happens before an E and a D, sorry, an E and a D. Uh, lampshade happens at the beginning of a word. And little there's one L at the beginning of the word, and the velar one is at the end of the word. So if we just look at this, there's not really a nice pattern here. So if we can't find a nice pattern, maybe we need to look at it through a different lens. Maybe we need to consider the fact that there could be syllables involved. So Let's think about the syllables here. So I'm just going to put in little syllable dots in all these words. Falter, mall, mildew, lampshade, little. Now, do we notice anything new? In fact, remember, syllables in these one-syllable words, the whole thing is just a syllable, right? So with light, leaf, release, bali, lampshade, and little, all of these L's are occurring at the beginning of a syllable. So we can say this is going to be the onset. What do we notice about all the velarized L's? Well, it happens at the end of the word in krill, at the end of the syllable in falter, end of the word in mall, end of the syllable in mildew, end of the word in little. All of these are at the end of a syllable. So all of these are going to be in coda positions. So we might not have been able to find a nice breakdown with just a nice environment chart, but if we reframe our view and look at syllables, we can get a nice account of this. So this one is definitely a harder problem compared to the other ones and compared to some of the other data sets that you do where you categorize separate phonemes. Um, but this is just a demonstration of what you can do when you exhaust all of your steps and you're still not quite sure about what's happening. And we see there's complementary distribution here because onsets and codas, uh, they never overlap. So that's how we could solve that one. So that was it for this week's tutorial. I know the video was rather short, only 14 or so minutes to do all the problems. I hope you did pause them and practice because practice is the most important thing in this course. Uh, if not, as always, you can just save them for later, revisit them at another time, and make sure you can do them on your own. So uh, even though it's a holiday Monday, next Monday, week five, you still have the practice exercises due. Test one is going to be next week as well, so make sure to, to check out that test guide. It's going to tell you what all of the questions are so you know what to study. It's going to be 50 minutes in class, closed books, no notes, no talking, all that stuff. Uh, please bring a pen to write it in. A pencil is fine. Erasable pen is fine. 
but if your answers smudge or get erased due to heat or paper rubbing, uh, we cannot be responsible for that, so please do it in a pen. So that's it. If you have any questions, you can ask them on Discord, discussion board, uh, email, and so on. And uh, we'll see you next week in class.